If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. What you can't believe is some of the social media posts or uh, advice, uh, popular posts that you will see on your Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and alike of bad gardening social media uh, advice or tips. Uh, let's let's talk about a couple of these so you don't do them. So I think this one makes you crazy, um, like little planters, vertical strawberries, rain gutters. Not necessarily the rain gutter grow system that's different. This is the this gr- is rain the gutters or in rain gutters or small containers mounted to the side of a fence or a garden shed it looks pretty but here's the thing especially with strawberries you've got a minimal amount of soil in the rain gutter or container that you've got mounted to the side of the fence or the the barn or the shed your your strawberries are only going to produce if you've got june bearing for about three two to three weeks a year if you have ever bearing you're going to get maybe five to six weeks a year you've got to maintain that grow system watering those plants pretty much two to three times a day in the hottest portion of the year because the evaporation is so intense that the plants don't have enough soil to retain the moisture in order for them to need. It's a beautiful picture, but a complete waste of time. If you're going to grow strawberries, and this is something that I have encouraged people uh, for many years, if you're going to, if, want, if you want a strawberry patch, establish one in the actual ground. You have minimal amount to almost no maintenance required. If you do it in a container, a grow tower, a rain gutter, whatever system, System. You're going to have to consistently water and maintain these plants just for a little harvest a few weeks a year. Right. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, so let's c- talk real quick about planting in eggshells, egg cartons. This looks really cute on P- Pinterest. You plant your whatever seeds in an eggshell, egg carton, and even and, a, even like the hollowed out lemon skin or, or orange. Oh yeah, peel. those too. So what happens is that that's ideal, but then once that seedling starts to sprout. In probably like, I don't know, three weeks, it's going to need some more room for roots. It's going to dry out just like that. If you forget to water, it's going to dry out in about 12 minutes. So you're going to transfer it, so you're using all that time to to grow. If you just use a root maker starting tray, a party cup, they have a lot of soil in each one of those in a sale or in the cup, where you can let that plant establish for many, many weeks uh, that you do not have to deal with it. Because the more we fuss with the plants and transplant them, the more shock they can go into. We want to basically plant once, go into the um, plant once, and then plant it in the garden and be done. That's the, the, the minimum or direct sow. That's really the minimal amount of fussing we can do with these plants, the better off we are. Right. So this is, I think, your favorite is the potato box. Now, please note, you can grow potatoes in a box or a container, but you're not going to get 100 pounds of potatoes from that box or container. The, the, the premise is you take a 4 foot by 4 foot square area. You have four posts, and you put boards around the four posts, and you create a, a vertical growing box. You plant one row or one layer of potatoes at the bottom. And then as the potatoes germinate and sprout, you fill soil in on top of the leaves like you would heal potatoes up in a garden if you're doing the traditional trench method. Then you add another board and you put more soil in as they grow. And then once they get four feet tall, the the box is filled, they will cascade over the top. And the, the theory is everywhere that stem touches soil, more roots will develop and more tubers will will uh, grow. True enough, potatoes are part of the nightshade family. The down, the, the incorrect information is just because they're part of the nightshade family, like a tomato, doesn't mean everywhere the stem touches soil, roots emerge. That does, that's not true. They will produce potatoes in about a four to six foot, a four to six inches under the soil. There's a little pocket of, of root development and that's it. So you can go online, go to YouTube and search potato tower box or potato box, and you can see 60, 80, 100 videos of people creating a potato tower expecting to get 80 to 100 pounds of potatoes out of it. But when you search for successful potato tower harvest, you get zero. You get a lot of videos about how they were disappointed and how they ended up with fewer potatoes than what they they started with. But what does work is if you do a layer, 
put the soil on top of, do another layer, put the soil on top of, do another, you'll get more potatoes than just one layer at the bottom. So do it in the ground. Uh, we're going to do a no-dig potato method as well um, uh, in our videos. Uh, works very well. Potato tower, forget it. doesn't work. Okay, so seeds that seem too good to be true. So rainbow strawberries, um, rainbow strawberries. The magical seeds. Magical seeds, uh, rainbow rose, all sorts of stuff like that. If it says magical, number one, you know it's a gimmick. Uh, if you go to MI Gardener and you search blue watermelon, if you go to a big seed company and search blue this or whatever, you, if they don't have it, it doesn't exist because these reputable uh, companies would have the seeds if they were available to be purchased. If there was all of these things, they would have them all for sale. Now, there really is like this blue banana. Yes. And that's a real thing. That's something you can grow. You can't, you can't grow it in like our zone five. I think it was like eight to ten or something that can grow at 8 to 11 so you definitely need to to pay attention to that but that is a thing the blue banana uh and finally here let's talk about companion planting you can go online search companion planting charts and see what is good to plant next to a tomato you can look at seven different charts and get five different recommendations of what's good and what's not and they all interming and there's no hard set this is what needs to be planted because there's no proof that if we plant this next to of that it will benefit the plants there are some people who swear by if we plant this next to that it does work now there is polyculture mm-hmm. where you plant for example a zucchini plant and then you plant basil around that zucchini plant to mask the smell of the zucchini plant so the squash bug doesn't find it because the smell of the basil emits and confuses the bugs from attacking your that's, plant. That's, 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 that's polyculture. That's polyculture. Now, companion planting would be like you grow your basil next to your tomatoes because supposedly they help, they help each other. It makes the tomatoes makes sweeter the tomatoes or something sweeter of or something like craziness that. like that. Or like, this is not really companion planting, but planting marigolds to keep the rabbits out of your garden. When you watch the rabbits eat the marigolds after you've planted them. Yeah. So that's something. Um, vol- volcano mulching uh, or volcano, I think that's what's called. Volcanic mulching. Mulch. Mulching. Volcanic mulching. It's when you pile the mulch next to a tree, three, so, two or so three feet above the above, actual crown of the tree, and then like up to it. So yeah. like it's flush with the tree. Just level. Level is all you well, need. Level it, and you're supposed to kind of make like a little divot. A well. A well. Yeah. A well around it. For more information, please visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com.